Hi, I'm Jim with InStuff Music, and I'm here today to do a demo of the Universal Audio Starlight Echo Station. Fasten your seatbelts for sonic time travel with the Universal Audio FX Starlight Echo Station, featuring jaw-dropping emulations of classic tape echo, bucket brigade, and digital delay units in a single, uber-powerful stomp box. Built upon futuristic Universal Audio FX dual engine processing and unflinching sonic accuracy, Starlight sets a new benchmark in delay effects beautifully crafted to travel the farthest reaches of your imagination for decades to come. On the pedal face, you will find controls for delay, feedback, mix, effect type toggle, store button, variation toggle, division control, color control, modulation control, on-off switch, and tap tempo and preset switch. The top of the pedal has both mono or stereo input and output, a USB jack, and the 9 volt power input jack, which requires 400 milliamps. You'll also receive the bonus Cooper Time Cube effect when you register the pedal and download the Universal Audio Effects control software. Get yours today at instuffmusic.com, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, leave a comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, now we're back after some of the specs on the pedal. Before we begin today, let's take a quick look at how we're recording and the amp settings. I'm going through this reissue deluxe reverb. I have the volume almost on five, the treble between five and six, the bass a touch south of five. Uh, the reverb is actually coming from plug-in on the aux. Just have a little bit of a plate going. Um, deluxe is going through the aux uh, with a 212 twin reverb setting with a 121 and a 57 on the cab. Straight into Pro Tools, no sweetening. And here we have the Universal Audio Starlight Echo Station. So this is part of a new line of pedals from Universal Audio. And this particular one is their delay box. It does a lot of stuff and it has a lot of functionality that you really probably couldn't tell just because the pedal itself, in, in my opinion, looks pretty basic. Uh, if you just look at the control surface, it's really simple to use, but you can get really deep with it. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm not gonna really look at anything beyond what is it coming out of the box. Now, if when you buy the pedal, as I mentioned, uh, they give you a free download where you can add um, a couple other sounds to this pedal. And I'm sure over time that you'll be able to expand the possibilities of it. But let's just uh, look what it does straight out of the box and listen to what it does straight out of the box. Let's hear the clean sound first on the guitar. Here's the neck. The middle. And the bridge. Whoop, bridge is not all the way up. Okay. So, I'm gonna start with the tape echo setting. So, of course, this is meant to uh, emulate an echoplex. Um, now, what these knobs do for all of the different presets changes from preset to preset. So when you get the manual, all the stuff's in there. I have it on the iPad here, so I don't mess anything up because there's a lot of uh, different, little different things that change from, from preset to preset. So here, our delay is going to be the time. Feedback's going to be the repeats. This is going to be the mix, your wet, dry. The division is going to be the division. So that's you know, basically how it's labeled. Now the color knob here is going to be the, what would be the record level for the Echoplex. And the mod is going to be how much tape flutter you, you have on it. And then you always, with every one of these presets, you have three different variable settings. You can kind of change the character of the delay. So in position A, it's fresh tape. Position B, it's a used warmer setting. And then position C, it's a darker worn tape setting. So let's start with position A, which is kind of the full frequency spectrum. And I'll give it to you how I had in the intro. I have it set to a quarter note and the mix is as loud as my dry signal. So here we go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
take it to the second setting. So as you can see here where we have record level, it actually kind of acts almost as like a, a wet dry because you wouldn't be hitting the tape very hard. So I can hit the tape here hard and then turn my mix down. You can overdrive your delays that way. Turn the flutter of the tape way up. the darkest setting. any of these presets you have your tap tempo always available to you all right let's move on next to the analog setting so this is like you know kind of your bucket brigade early 80s analog delay sound so here what are our three settings position a vibrato off position b modulation off or I'm sorry, vibrato mod, middle position B is modulation off, C is chorus mod. So this is getting into your kind of memory man thing. So let's start it in the middle with everything off. Just give it a whirl. <laughs> So in this setting, you got time, repeats, wet, dry, your division, so all that functionality is the same. The color, here this is your, um, your input gain, and this is your modulation depth. So I can hit the input gain hard, and again I can distort. So that's, all, that's always going to make your delays louder. So if you want to overdrive your delays, then you got to kind of balance it out with your mix control. So you can get those cool trails where it almost sounds like, like faux bit crushed, you know? So this is kind of how you control. Think of it like how clean your delays are going to be. I'm going to bring my mix back up now. Let's try it in position A with the vibrato mod. So, and then this is my, the depth of my modulations. If 
Then you can really hear it kick in there when I get it up to about two o'clock. Almost gives like a washy texture to the trails. You can really hear it there. All right, let's go to the chorus mod. <laughs> let's hear it. You can really hear it, right? So if I turn the depth down a little bit, it's slight, you know? Last, the precision. It's gonna be your more like, you know, getting into your more 80s and 90s, like a rack mount thing. So let's go over here, th these controls. Time, repeats, wet, dry, division. So the same. Your uh, treble and bass, right? Flat EQ, so you can increase your treble, right? Decrease it, accentuate those things. And then here, this is gonna be your rate depth and feedback. So in the middle and B, mod off. Flanger mod when you're in the up position. So this knob will be the uh, rate of the flanger. In the, um, and then in the, uh, in the middle, this is gonna control the depth. And then when you're in position C for the chorus, this is gonna give you the, um, I'm sorry. That'll be the rate for the chorus, the depth for the chorus. So let's keep it in B. Just listen to it straight up. So this is gonna be the cleanest sound. Turn this, just turn this completely off. It's got a quarter note so we can hear it cleanly. So you can hear how much brighter that is when I go there, and it also makes the delays more prominent. You can make them, you know, crank up the treble but bring your mix back. find if you're using like a, this is an old Dimension C I'll kick on, if you're using say a chorus pedal in addition to this, you're kind of getting into like new wave territory. It's cool to brighten up the delays when maybe a type of modulation you're using is darker so it doesn't get muddy. That's a strategy I use. All right, let's go to the flanger mod. Let's put it in the middle. Let's hear it. chorus mod. Turn the depth way up. 
That's your rate, right? Darken it. So with a lot of these, you can go from really subtle, subtle coloration of your delays to pretty warbly. Um, and I mean, you can, the amount of different sounds you can get just by tweaking every one of these is pretty vast. So next I want to talk a little bit about tap tempo versus preset. So if, if you can see here, it says tap tempo, and if you hold it down, it goes straight to a preset. So when you're red, your delay is always going to reflect what's happening on the control surface. If you hold the preset button down, it goes to green, like that. You're going to go to your preset. So that's just what happens. When that's, when that's going, that's whatever preset you have stored there. Now, if I go back here, it's the control surface. So essentially, you can, it's almost like you can have two different delay settings right at, your, right at your feet there, which is very convenient. And then when the so with their software, you can store other delay settings. So uh, hopefully that gives you a good sense of everything this pedal can do. Uh, all the sounds, um, you know, again, it has a USB interface, uh, Universal Audio's control software is now available, so you can get really deep with this pedal. It's an amazing sounding pedal. Um, it's really something you have to hear in person. You know, I think a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, just another delay pedal, another mod pedal. The fidelity of these things and the quality of the sounds, like a lot of the Universal Audio stuff, man, you can really tell in my opinion, especially when you hear it in person. You know, this is just mono going into an amp, but the other thing is this pedal really shines when you put it in stereo. So that's it, the Universal Audio Starlight Echo Station.